I always like trying new things, and this time around, we're going to do a rose in resin. It's a lot of work. I learned so much. Let me take you through my process and teach you what I learned along the way. Hi everybody, it's Janet here from Moon Cusser Art, and I am going to do something I haven't done before. I've seen it done before. I got some silica gel, and it was just Valentine's Day. So we have some roses, and I am going to be putting them into containers. And uh, there's two methods you can do. There is the accelerated method where you put it in a microwave, and it only takes a couple of minutes to do it. But I don't want to put chemicals in my microwave because I don't have one that I can use just for art projects. So I'm taking the slow and patient method. I'm putting it into containers and letting it sit quietly and do its thing. So let's do this process. Activia's directions state that it can take five to seven days for flowers to dry depending on the humidity. I'm checking the vibrancy against the original rose and doing a little dusting, getting some of that silica gel off of there. But when I feel down into the center of the flower, I can tell that it's not dry. So I'm putting it back into the container, covering it carefully and sealing it up. All right, my roses are all dry. Got a couple several of them that I did and they are completely dry. The one of the things that I'm not real crazy about is the dust that sticks on them. Um, the, the silica gets down in between the petals. So, you know, it seems like every single time I shake them, I get a little bit more out, <laughs> but I guess that's, you know, what's going to happen. I've used a very fine haired this is a very fine animal hair brush. I've used that on this rose to remove the dust from the silica as best I can. You know, there's, there's going to be some down in here that I just can't get to. I've used my airbrush to blow at it, but you have to be really careful blowing on these because you can damage. They're very, very fragile. This is silicone. And you can see, even when I tip this, this has a nice feature to it. One of the things that I looked for was to get one of these that it doesn't stand up on the silicone itself. It, it goes into this base. Because what I have found with silicone molds is over time, they will begin to lose their shape. And if they don't have something to push against, you're going to get um, problems with formation. So it's a nice soft silicone, so it should be able to release carefully. It fits perfectly into this little container that they provide you with. I have um, a friend of mine who makes silicone molds, and her recommendation to make your mold last longer is to always use a mold release. Okay, so I'm going to be using mold release so that I can get a long life out of this mold. I'm going to be using counterculture. This is their hard cast. It's a two to one ratio. And this is for doing deeper pours. And it's important not to try to go too deep. So, I'm not going to make a lot. I'm going to use this little measuring cup. It's very handy because it's got everything marked out for me. So I'm going to batch up 30 millimeters. That's all. Just a little bit. So I'm going to need 10 of the part B and 20 of the part A. Again, I always like to put the part B in first because it's much more fluid and it's easier to mix it and get it off of the sides so that you get a good com combination. So I'm just going to measure that out real quick and combine it right in that little tiny mixing cup and then I'll put it into another cup, give it another stir and get it thoroughly mixed. Now I have a new 
tool in the studio. It's a vacuum chamber and it's a new purchase. So first time using it. Set things up. I'm, I want to make it so you guys can see what's happening. So I've got, you know, a pot in the bottom and then my pot on top and then I've got a pot in the bottom and that's all to try to get it so that I can get this on camera for you guys. So you can see there's lots of bubbles and they tell you, well, it's, it's a, a good practice to not have your resin filling your cup. You want room for that expansion when you're drawing that air out. Now I have to set the lid on. Like that. And you want to make sure that the orange rubber gasket is sitting on the edge. So there's my gauge. I'm going to watch my gauge. I don't know if I can get, no, can't get both of it on camera. So. It's, it's, I think it's more important get you closer. And let's look down in there. Nope, got to go like that. All right, so I'm going to make some noise. We're going to take the pressure down, create our vacuum. And using time-lapse photography, it makes it so much easier. You're going to watch the bubbles rise in that cup. That's why you need to have a larger cup so that you can adjust for that expansion. Otherwise, you're going to make a big mess. So I run it through its cycle a total of three times. As I draw the vacuum, the bubbles rise up. And then when I release the pressure, they drop back down. So by doing it three times, I'm running it through a cycle and I'm really getting it, the resin cleared out very nicely. So I still have a few bubbles at the surface, but the torch will pop those bubbles quick. Now we're gonna go put the resin in the mold. All right, so the want to make sure I put on my mold release. That would be bad if I didn't do that. And now I want to pour this in and I want to try to not create any bubbles. I'm just letting the resin hit the side and go down in. And you can see I'm not making this deep at all. This is about an inch deep. And that's as deep as I want to go. And there's a little bit of bubbles down in there. But my most important thing is to tease that See it coming up? Here they come. There were two nice sized bubbles down in the bottom. And because there's so few bubbles, I can see them very easily. I'm just gonna push the toothpick very gently down the sides where these folds are to encourage any little micro bubbles that might be sitting in there because anything that remains, it's all going to matter in the end. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit and start to cure. A little bubble down in there. So I'm gonna use my little embossing tool it's a low heat and it's gonna move those bubbles around and won't harm my silicone if I'm careful. And I see a very, very fine little hair in there. Cause you guys know I got a puppy dog and I got it. 
<laughs> All right. Cool. That's it. See you in a while. It's the next day and I'm starting doing another batch again. So back to batching the resin and running it through the vacuum chamber. Again, I go through a series of three times of vacuuming the pressure out of the chamber, neutralizing it, and that seems to work well with getting the bubbles out. Now we can go ahead and use that fresh resin, put it on top of the layer from last night, and again using the embossing tool to quickly pop the bubbles that come to the surface, check it with a toothpick at those edges, because those are the tricky spots. All right, I have batched a little bit more resin and put it through the vacuum chamber. So I'm happy with that. So I poured my last layer and I'm kind of having an aha moment because roses have a lot of depth in them. A lot of little nooks and crannies. So if I put it in upside down, I'm not going to be able to get it all up in there. So what I'm thinking is I need to put this in its own little bit of resin. So I'm going to put it in this cup so I can get all that yuck out of there. I'm going to use this plastic cup. I'm going to spray it with some of the mold release. And worst case scenario is I have to cut this off of the resin. That's my worst case scenario, I think. My best case scenario is that using the mold release, it'll let go of the plastic and I'll pop right out. So I'll have minimal work to do after that. So I'm gonna spray it. Get it out of here. Just a little bit to help it on its way. Let me get a stick. And I'm, I know I can't do the whole thing. We know this. So we're going to put in some of our resin. I like to pour it on the stick because I feel like that breaks the fall and it helps me avoid some bubbles. So see how I just pour it right on there and let it flow right in? Just like that. Keep a little bit aside. And I can't pour the whole thing or it'll be too deep. And I have to pop those bubbles in there. So do that. So one of my later lights. All right, so now I'm gonna take my rose and I'm gonna put it in the cup. I'm trying to keep it as straight as I can. Let's see if it's centered. pretty good. And then pour this in because I don't want this to float. Yeah, it's starting to float now. I want it to stay down in there. And I can see some resin in around the petals at the bottom now. So 
So it's going where it wants to go. I'm hoping by putting this resin here on top, that'll encourage it to stay to the bottom. Although it looks like it's just running right through there, which I thought might happen too. But see how the bubbles are coming up as I pour that? That's why I want to do it in this direction. Because if I tried to put it in the other way, I wouldn't be able, I would be full of bubbles. We don't want that. Do we? Okay, so that's what we're going to try. And guess what? If this fails, I have other roses. So it looks pretty balanced to me now. Get you up close here. There it is. And I'll take you down and give you a side shot of what the bubble situation is. All right, so here's the tabletop view. You can see some of the little bubbles down there. Not bad, but you know, they're there nonetheless. rotation there but it's fairly balanced it's fair there's some good bubbles yeah so like I said you know I'm not gonna get myself too crazy about it but that looks pretty good so we're gonna let that sit and cure and then we'll fill her up see you later and after six hours of letting the first layer in the rose start to set up, I'm going to add the second one and top that cup off. I tap it on the table to get bubbles to rise. I use a toothpick to ease them out. Okay, good morning, guys. This is very hard. <laughs> and got a couple of, couple of little bubbles here in the middle. There's a couple of little bubbles down in around the flower, but you know, like I said, you can't get them all out. So you got to pick and choose and, uh, but it's nice and clear. So I'm happy with the look of that. Anyway, uh, I've got a couple of tools here. I got my gloves on because you, you know, if you are handling uh, fresh resin, you really want to have gloves on so that you don't leave any oils or fingerprints. So let me put you on time lapse and we'll see about getting this out of this container. All right, successful. So not bad, not bad at all. There's some advertising for Solo. <laughs> um, yeah, not bad at all. So nice, uh, you know, it's quite clear. And uh, so I want to take that lip edge off of there because remember, I'm going to be submerging this into more resin in the um, pyramid. So let's get the pyramid over here. All right, so there's the pyramid. And my thought was, you know, to be able to place this right here in the middle, because if you've worked with resin before and you know that you, if you sand it down, you might get that cloudy look on the outside, but when you pour more resin on it, it goes clear. It, it just takes that away. So that's my hope on this. So this would sit right down in here. And then I would be filling up around that. So that's what we're going to do here. And uh, that's going to take some time for me to get this all sanded down. I'll, I'll be using my... Um, my power sander outdoors with some heavy grit uh, sanding paper on it. So I will uh, sand and sand and sand, and I will see you soon. 
I just spent about an hour and a half in the backyard, and this is what has happened. Doesn't look like much, does it? So I got this sanded down. You can still see the marks. I think you can. Where are the little bubbles were in the top. And I started with 80 grit sandpaper, then I went to 120, then I went to 220, and 320, and finished with 400. So, I got the bottom. Solo is gone. Now I've, I opened it up right to the stem. And that's okay, I think. <laughs> but I've rounded it. And every surface has been sanded. And it looks pretty awful, doesn't it? But... I'm not 100% positive, but I have sanded down resin many, many times before, and it will look really dull and ugly and blah, blah, blah. Can't even see really the flower in there. Maybe like that you can. It's in there. I opened up a bubble here, too. So... All these things should not be a problem. If my theory is correct, and, you know, it's just a theory. <laughs> I could prove myself wrong. <laughs> anyway, this is going into the triangle, or not a triangle, pyramid. And um, I'm going to batch up some resin, and we're going to put it in there, and we're going to get this going. Okay. So here's my batched up resin, nice and crystal clear, loving that vacuum, and um, I'm going to be putting this into the pyramid upside down because I'm, you know, building it from the top up, and it's inverted. So. I thought that I would put this here and take my popsicle stick and put a little bit of resin just to give you guys and myself That little aha moment. Do you see the aha moment? Yes. This is going to work. This is really cool, guys. <laughs> I'm so happy. I really wasn't 100% sure. The resin, you know, when I was sanding it, I could feel it was still slightly soft, so it was getting a little gummy from the heat. But check it out. Check it out. It is going to work. Is that not pretty? Pretty, pretty. Okay, cool. So... We can pop the bubbles just like that. And like I said, there's a couple little bubbles in around the flower, but you know, it's what are you gonna do? Can't get can't get it perfect. I can try really hard. I have that one little spot here. So I have to make sure I give that a little TLC as it's going in. So, get this out of my way. Let's bring the pyramid in. And I'm going to put a little bit, try and do it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Trying to build up a little bit more 
resin on the top. I don't want to go crazy. And I'm going to put a little bit doing like I like to do. Pour it on the stick. Try to control the bubbles. And then just let that flow in there. Okay. And I want to try to get... Um, let's use a smaller stick maybe. Try to massage some resin into that little pit that I made there. Let's see where that is there. Okay. And then I always have some handy dandy picks that are my friend. They help me get the bubbles out of there so I can minimize it as best I can. Just like that. All right, so now we're going to turn it over and place it in to the resin. Okay. And I want to try to center it as best I can. Wowee! That's looking pretty darn awesome. Get a little... Spritz of alcohol. It's 99% alcohol. If you're spritzing with 99% alcohol, do yourself a favor. Don't decide to come back and light it unless you don't like your eyebrows. <laughs> Not a good idea. So, all right. I'm going to let that sit and begin its cure. And it's looking pretty darn good. All right, take the top off of that. Last night I came back down and I had poured another layer of resin and uh, that was another four and a half ounces. So now here I've got six ounces batched up. And sticking with my method, pouring onto the stick to try to minimize the bubbles. And a little bit across the top. I want to seal up. See how I'm getting an air bubble right there? That's what I figured was going to happen. Because because of the uh, material, the flower, you're going to get air bubbles as the resin tries to replace the space. So fill that up. More sweet with this. Okay. And I'm also going to give it a quick little spritz of the 99% alcohol. Because why not? Like that. All right. 
and we're going to cover it back up now. I'm going to come back down and check that stem to see if it's releasing any more air because it could do that to me. So I'll be coming back, you know, multiple times while this is starting to, to cure. See ya. I've got four ounces of resin and I'm starting to run out of room. Amazing. So I have these little sparkles that I put on top late last night. I forgot to do it earlier. Some of them are definitely down into the resin and stuck. Some are not. And I did that because I was trying to create like a graduated layer. So this is Culture Cast. It's their artist resin, the original, uh, which is, I think they call it uh, thick viscosity. Maybe not. It's either medium or thick, but it's the original artist resin. And I ran it through the pressure chamber, not pressure, the vacuum chamber three times, just as I've done with their hard cast. And you can see I cannot get the bubbles out. So... Using a casting resin is going to be really important because it's thinner and you can get the bubbles out. This is a thicker viscosity and I cannot get the bubbles out of there. But because I'm so close to the top, I'm going to be able to use my torch. So I have that ready to go and I will be popping my bubbles in that method. I'm going to pour this on let it start thickening, and then I'm going to sprinkle on some more of these little gold glitter triangles. And I've got some already out and into a cup, ready to do that. So I'm gonna watch my time this time around, so let's get pouring this on. Okay, I zoomed way in so that you guys can see all these little tiny bubbles. And let me tell you, after doing so much work, Using the hard cast and the vacuum chamber, this was eye-opening. Anyway, we let it sit up, and now I am working on adding a little bit more of those triangular glitter pieces, and they're settling in nicely. Now to seal in that glitter, just another quick four ounces of the Counterculture DIY, the artist's original resin. Good night. Everything is cured. I am out of room on my mold. Looks like I have about a quarter of an inch <laughs> of room left in there. And uh, this final layer is all cured, cured overnight, nice and smooth. So I am going to get it out of here. But I'm going to change my camera angle because, well, I don't. Maybe I'll not. Maybe, maybe I'll try it right here. This thing is heavy. It took a lot of resin. And that's pretty sweet. It comes right out of there. I've seen other people struggle with getting their pieces out of their molds. Out of, out of their support boxes. But... This is it, guys. This is the big whoop de doo unveiling. And yeah, it's really tight on the edges. So I'm going to turn off the camera and uh, loosen those up a little bit carefully. Okay. I've gone about loosening everything up, and I'll tell you right now, sad development. So I damaged my mold by using the torch. And I had to use the torch because I changed over to the artist resin because I wanted, I wanted to make sure that this surface was going to be rock hard because this is going to take a lot of damage to it. So that's why I switched over to it, and it stuck to the mold really, really bad. I used the torch because I had to pop the bubbles, and there you can see some of the damage on the mold. 
So, um, but it appears as if it's just that layer. So let's get this out of here. Ha, huh, I thought I had it all loosened up. I found another spot. So let's get that one. So you can see, you know, I think you can see. Try to get it on camera for you. So right here. See how it's hanging on? It's not a big spot, but there were some big spots. So I'm taking my razor blade, because I don't have any other choice, and just cutting it loose. And we peel it down. And there we have another spot, and that's going to be so there you go. This is, a, you know, a good lesson for you guys. I like to say my pain is your gain. But here's another spot where I'm going to have to cut that mold loose. So I'm trying to do it as carefully as I can. But there's only so much I can do. So see, the mold is still stuck on there. I'll hopefully be able to clean that off. And that's even with using the mold release. So there it is out of the mold, even with its damage. I'll have cleaning up to do to get that stuff off of there. But there it is, very clear. I like that. And my idea was because I bought a base to put this on. So I left the bottom clear. And let's see how it looks. Turn off some of the lights. And turn on. Oh. Hopefully, there it goes. I wanted the light to be able to come up through the base, and uh, that's what it looks like. I'll get some better video from a different angle, but that gives you an idea. Okay, better view. Well, there it is in all of its glory. And, uh, you know, again, I'm really pleased with how clear the counterculture DIY hardcast performed. I got the bubbles out is really stunning as far as the imperfections from bubbles. It's minimal. You can see how my technique of putting it, the rose, within another cup, how that disappeared. And it really gives a wonderful illusion of the rose floating in there. Well, I definitely learned a lot doing this project. I'm glad I invested in the vacuum chamber. That's going to be a huge improvement. And wish me luck getting that silicone off. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Mooncusser Art.